Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT and more specifically, we're in our Stormwreck Isle slash Fandelver campaign, which is the very battle map heavy and automation heavy uh, version. Uh, and the reason why we're in here is it's been a while since we looked at MIDI QOL and all of the settings to automate all of our stuff. And there have been some updates. So a few things have changed. The D&D game engine has been updated. The modules have been tweaked to make sure they're still compatible and things. And a couple of people have made comments um, in some of the old, what are now older videos, saying that some of their things aren't quite working. So I've been through, had a play and got my things functioning again. I found a couple of little bits that suddenly stopped working. So uh, Surryman, we had his rage working without any drama whatsoever and suddenly it decided that that didn't work. Um, <laughs> for stranger reasons, it's just to do with updates and things. And if I go in to edit his rage, uh, it was to do with these details um, and it had set it to be a... Uh, uh, to be a action recharge um, and it wasn't accessing his rage in fact his rage it was trying to suggest that every time he used it it needed to consume strength rather than consume his rage resource so of course it couldn't actually take his strength down and it was just failing so there was a couple of little things like that that just somewhere in the background got changed um, so, what I want to do in this video is I'm going to walk through my MIDI QOL settings as they are, just so that if you are trying to replicate what I've got here, brilliant, you can pretty much follow my own settings, make sure you've got it working, and then tweak to your preference. Um, so if you're not interested in that automation side of things, this video is probably not for you. <laughs> go watch something else, preferably one of mine, but go watch something else and uh, don't waste your time, because uh, this is all about MIDI QOL animation and those settings. Um, but also, we did have a question from somebody about the parry thing. So at the end, um, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the, what, what the issue that I have encountered with using parry uh, and see if you guys can help me out for once. Because <laughs> I might not say for once, you guys are always really good um, with your comments and tips and things like that. But this is one I've kind of got a bit stuck on. Okay, so let's start off with our uh, MIDI QLL settings. Now I'm going to try and get as much of this on the page at once so that you can pause the video and see everything I've got here. So that is everything. This is just my front page of the basic settings we've got. Um, really, really important enable role automation support. If you don't have that switched on, everything's going to fall over. All right. So I'm going to assume you've had a chance to pause, screenshot or whatever you're going to do with that. Uh, now, target confirmation wise, I just use enable target confirmation if none are selected. That's all I use. Okay, you've had a chance to look at that. <laughs> um, configuration mini cu MIDI custom sounds, I don't have anything on there and I don't touch the troubleshooter. But the workflow settings, this is the big one, isn't it? Okay, so for those of you who have not used this before, uh, let me close that in the background to make it a bit clearer what you're looking at. So for those of you new to MIDI QOL, I do recommend you go and watch the original videos when we work through it together. Um, but just as a reminder, the last tab at the top here, there's a whole bunch of them, this quick settings is really, really useful to get you, it's not necessarily a complete solution, but a really good way to get you started. So you can say, yes, I want full automation and it will set it for you and then you can tweak it uh, or no automation or... Uh, the Game Master attack and damages are automatic, which is kind of where I started mine with. I want the players to still be making their roles. I want to save time on the DM and automate that stuff. So whatever you want to do that. Uh, rules wise, I don't have any optional rules put in here. That's all exactly as it is. Under mechanics, so I can't make this one bigger. Um, I implemented this when hit points fall below 50% it gives them that wounded effect straight away so as soon as they hit under half health now that says wounded CE because that is a convenient effect so D threads needs to be in so you can select a convenient effect from there um, you don't need to use it I just like it it gives an indicator that they are about half health um, and you can see that that monster or that character is getting quite battered what happens when they hit zero HP, players become incapacitated, um, everybody else becomes dead, etc. 
Uh, I don't have any of these on the settings in here for blind roles. Uh, incapacitators, incapacitated actors can't take actions. Of course not, they're incapacitated. Uh, and I've got mostly defaults on for some of these things. Ability check advantage gives skill advantage. Uh, yes, um, and show before and after optional bonus chat card. I've got that switched on. That's really down to your preference. Okay, hopefully you've managed to have a chance to look at that. Um, in miscellaneous here, now a lot of this stuff is, is again, it, it's not really affecting the workflow too much. Um, you can see what I've got mine set on. You can work your way through, have a play. We've got all, all of these have these little, um, these, these little kind of hints underneath to tell you what they do, which is quite nice. So again, let's scroll down a bit so you can see what I've got on. And I'm not using a lot of these options, which is, yeah, they're just miscellaneous bits. All right, so hopefully you've got those. Now I'm now going to stop going backwards and I'm going to start at the GM1. Okay, so this is what I've got set up for the Game Master. <coughs> I do apologise, just cough down the microphone. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, so again, this is all of the Game Master settings here. There's nothing to scroll on. Auto attack, yes, I've got that on. And I've got it about auto consumption stuff. Again, you can just see exactly what I've got here. Um, you know, and, and replicate those if that's what you want to do. Now we look at the player ones, even fewer here. This is the auto attack roll for the players. This is the one that I turn off because I want my players to be actually in control of their dice rolls. So this is pretty much nothing on here at all, which is fine. Uh, and then we get to workflow. So this is one of the big ones which talks about how that automation actually happens. So again, I'm not going to walk you through every bit. You can screenshot, you can pause the video, etc. and see what I'm doing. Uh, but it covers the targeting. Uh, it recovers when you must have a target selected. Uh, some special things here, of item effects and stuff. Just going to scroll down. Um, things to do with hits. Things to do with saves. Uh, default saving multipliers, etc. Uh, and then we've got a section on damage here about how we show damage and all of that stuff. Uh, how we apply damage immunities um, and what some of the rules are around that, such as... We make a saving throw for half damage, then we apply damage reduction, then we apply damage resistance in that order. But you can change that for whatever suits you. Uh, and that's kind of it. Okay, so it's just controlling um, how the combat flows uh, when we're using the automation. And the last two we've got is concentration. So this is how I've got my concentration set up. So when I cast spells that require concentration, it adds that tag on for them. Um, and we and that will all work for me nicely and we've seen that before in previous videos uh, and then on the reactions tab which is our last one reaction processing do we prompt for reactions yes we check for players yes we check for npcs reaction timeout i have realized that that's actually really quite long i'm going to halve that to 15 seconds okay it's supposed to be a reaction you know you are, you're either going to do it or you're not <laughs> Um, in fact, I might even make it 10. I think 10 is plenty. If they're paying attention, that should be plenty. Um, show a chat prompt. Yep. Show attack roll total. Allow any reaction spell to be used. Again, this is what I've got. You might want to change it for what you're doing. Um, well, it's all good. All right. So that's all the settings. So from that point of view, that part of the video is kind of done. That's the settings I'm using. Hope that's helpful. Um, if you put in all those in and something's not working, just bear in mind that it might be that some of those things are not are powered by other stuff that we've got. So we've got quite a few modules installed in this one. So what you need to bear in mind is it could be something to do with active auras or active token effects. Automated animations um, could be something in there, but probably not. Um we have, of course, defreds convenient effects. We already mentioned about that. It's a kind of a requirement. We've got the dynamic effects DAE as well, which is powered by some of those things in there. Um, we've got our animations. Uh, Monk's token bar that we reference within those settings as well for just how we handle certain things like, um, you know, dice rolls and how that pops up. Um, time's up. Um, for controlling our spells and stuff that's all we, we already know about that we've been over that before 
um, and token magic effects. So I don't think that integrates directly with the MIDI QOL settings, um, but we've got that on as well. Okay, so what's the parry problem then? So I got a couple of characters on here, as you can see. I have a, an ogre and I've got Baldrick here, and we can shove them into combat. We can roll down initiatives, etc. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so they're automated rolling as soon as I say, please do it. Um, and we can see that actually as soon as I start combat, conveniently it's Baldrick's go. Okay, so make sure we've only got Baldrick selected uh, and he can move in and he can attack over here. So quick demonstration of the automation, of course, but just by doing this, give ourselves a bit of space and he can make that halberd attack. Oops, if I click the button correctly, it's going to automatically roll that. We get our animation. It's going to automatically see if it hit um, the... the um, did I just attack myself? <laughs> I think I just attacked myself. Let's try that again. It's because I missed clicked off. <laughs> there we go. He's now attacking the ogre. That's better. <laughs> uh, and you can see in that case he did hit. Um, it was quite quick, but you can see in the, on the chat on the right-hand side. Uh, he rolled to hit. He did hit. He did damage. It's damaged the ogre and the health bar has gone down. So that's what we expect to do with our automation. Lovely, beautiful. Right, let's move on. Ogre's turn. Now, when the ogre has his turn, this is where we might see that there's a slight issue. So what Baldrick has here, you can see on the left-hand side, is he has, um, I've given him the uh, Battlemaster uh, feat, and he's got some maneuvers here. One of those is parry. So how parry, and you might be able to read that on screen, when another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction, expend one superiority die, and reduce the damage you receive by whatever that die roll is. Okay, so it doesn't affect your armor class. It literally reduces incoming damage by whatever that superiority die roll is. So this is what I'm having some problems with. Uh, Mr. Ogre, can you please thwack him with your club? But he misses, of course. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, let's try it again. I'm going to clear that chat, so just make sure we're, we know what we're looking at when he does finally manage to hit. When he does finally manage to hit. <laughs> I must remember to take armor off my fighters when I'm demoing stuff. <laughs> there we go. Hurrah. Now, immediately, it asks him if he wants to use Polearm Master Opportunity Attack, which isn't actually relevant here. That's a little tweak I need to sort out. Uh, but it's going to do everything else. And this is the one. Now, I've got to be quick because I've, I've changed it to 10 seconds. Do I want to use my maneuvers parry? Yes, I do. Let's click it. Right. What the heck happened there? So this is what we need to debug here. So on the right hand on the right hand side here, we've got we made an attack roll. It was a 22 and it hits. That's great. And a total of 10 damage was rolled. We then got, oh, do you want to use your reaction? We said yes. Now, the good thing is you can see just this card, the third card down, reaction applied to Baldrick Hillmite. So he's got this little icon in his top left corner. Let's click off of him so that you can see that easier. He's got this top left corner to say he's used his reaction this round. That's correct. That's what we want. Um, and he parried, in theory, he parried eight damage incoming. How much damage did he take? Um, well, if you look on the left, you can see that we've got his hit points over here. He's on 18. He was on 28. He's taken the full 10 damage. So what it's not done is actually say, oh, he's took 10 damage, I've got to take that 8 off and only apply what's left, which is 2. I've got two cards here that are applying that damage. Now the first one, you can see what it's saying is, is we've got 28 hit points, minus 0 damage coming in, which we've taken 8 off of, so it does no damage. And then, it's separately, it's applying that original 10 hit points damage. So these two, it should be one card. I want it saying he's got 28 hit points minus the 10 from the club, which should be minus the 8 from the parry. So it should be total of minus 2, and we should be down to 26 hit points. Now... Obviously, I can manually do that and say, oh, actually, it was only you can get your eight hit points back and we can go in and go, oh, right, yeah, I should be on 24. Um, 
24? 26. <laughs> Maths, eh? Shush. <laughs> um, but that's not, that's not how we want it to work. We want it to automate. And I can't, for the life of me, figure it. Um, I've played for it quite a lot. Don't know how to do it. I don't quite know where things are going. Um, and I've done some um, some searches and looking for it. And there's nothing even remotely recent that talks specifically about this parry one where it reduces damage. Now, when we look at things like the shield spell, that will increase your armor class and stuff. That seems to work absolutely fine as a reaction. It whacks up the armor class. Oh, that hit no longer is a hit. Fine. But when it comes to the damage, I don't want two lots of damage. I need it to merge these into one calculation. Uh, and it ain't doing that. Uh, so if any of you know, if any of you got any ideas, it would be very, very much appreciated. So we can try and um, get that working properly. Um, you know, because other people will encounter it. The more animations people, uh, sorry, the more automation people want to do, the more little little things like that we're going to encounter. Uh, but there we go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate if you can give me some feedback on this, uh, if you know what the solution is for that, or if you're having any other problems with automation with MIDI QOL. Again, happy to try and look at them, but most of you lot know about as much as I do. So, but we'll ask the community. See you guys. You take care.